it's time. One of my favorites, we're gonna make macaroni and cheese today. I'm normally the guy that goes and buys some fancy Italian pasta. All you want is a small little shape. My family wants classic elbow macaroni, so that's what we're going with. It's time, let's cook. I'm gonna show you how to make my favorite version of mac and cheese. Let's go. Okay, here's what you're gonna need. Obviously, elbow macaroni, about 400 grams of a really nice sharp cheddar, some Gruyere, about 150 grams, some Comte, about another 150 grams, a little bit of Spanish or smoked paprika, either one's fine, a liter of milk, a little bit of cream, I'll show you what we're gonna do with that later, a couple cloves of garlic, because we're gonna heat that up in the milk, some salt, some black pepper, and that is it. Let's get going. Okay, we're just gonna smash this garlic. You could also add an onion if you wanted. I'm gonna keep it a little simple today. We'll just do some garlic infused milk. That's it. You don't have to be too precious about this. Just get the skins off. Give it a little rough chop. <clears throat> and we're gonna throw that in to our pot with our milk. So that's about 900 milliliters of milk. And I always like to add about 100 milliliters of 35% cream. That's good. Just adds a nice little layer of richness to it. Put that on the stove, bring up the temperature until you see bubbles, drop it down to minimum. We're gonna leave it warming, let that garlic infuse into the milk. Okay, let's get our cheese grated. Just using a box grater with the big holes. Super simple. We're gonna grate all of the cheese. And we're gonna make sure we leave some out the end to the top. A real important thing. Just give it a nice mix. We're gonna get the water boiling and the pasta cooking while we get our roux and our cheese sauce together. So, big pot of water. I like to under salt this pasta water simply because the cheese is salty and I can add salt as I cook through this process. So I like to, again, under salt your pasta water just a little bit. So let's get this boiling. Got our warm milk. Now this, I wish you could smell this. As I stir this, I'm getting all the aroma of the garlic. And again, you could put a cut onion in here if you want and strain it. I like just to smash that garlic, get it in there, really flavors the milk well, and makes for a far tastier mac and cheese. Let's make our roux. Hit this over like a medium high heat. We wanna put all of our butter right in there. Okay, just as the butter starts to foam up, we're gonna add 60 grams of all-purpose flour. And let's start whisking. The key is to keep whisking. And why you want the heated milk is because if it's heated, there's less chances of it clumping and causing you a big old headache in the middle of making your mac and cheese. So, do one ladle at a time. Keep whisking. You can turn the heat down a little bit to medium. As it starts to come together, you can add a little more than just the one. Okay. 
Okay, there we go. Our roux and our milk is combined. You can see my little bits of garlic floating around in there. Again, you can strain that garlic out if you want. I leave it in there. Everyone in my family's fine with that. And now we want to add at least two thirds of this cheese. And again, we want to just do this sort of one handful at a time. You can take the heat right down to minimum. In fact, you can just turn it right off. This cheese doesn't need a lot of help. Whoops. Um, melt it. This is going to be plenty hot enough. Okay. So that's done. We've got about that much left, a couple big handfuls for the top. You can put panko breadcrumbs or regular breadcrumbs on top there with it. I'm going to take a pass on the breadcrumbs tonight. I've done, I like panko. I got to admit, I like having panko breadcrumbs on there, but tonight, nuh uh. Okay. So you can see that. Get nice strands of cheese in there. Delicious. Can't wait. Okay. Let's finish seasoning this. A little bit of salt, whole bunch of cracked black pepper. That's good enough. And that's it. Okay, so we just get our Elbow macaroni right into the boiling water. And the trick with this is just keep it stirring. Just follow package directions. You want to pull it out just a little before al dente. It's going to finish cooking in the oven. And as always, save a cup of the pasta water in case you need to loosen up the sauce at all. Okay, let's mix everything together. So we've got our cheese sauce, pasta. And just been a good minute stirring this thing up. We want to make sure every little elbow macaroni is all covered in sauce. And we've got a little bit of the pasta water saved. If you have, I don't think we're going to need it here. In fact, yeah, no, we will not. But if you get to the stage and your sauce is looking a little too thick, maybe you didn't put enough milk in, maybe you put too much flour in, you can use the sauce to break it up a bit. I'll just show you a little. Also nice and salty and starchy. There we go. Okay, let's get that into the pan, top it with some cheese. Put that in there. Okay, now we just top it with cheese. You just make sure we get the cheese sort of edge to edge. You can at this point also sprinkle on a little bit of panko. That's it. We're gonna bake it at 350 for about 20 or 25 minutes. I have pulled this out a little early on purpose. I'm gonna I bake this, I'm gonna let it rest, and then I'm gonna reheat it when I'm doing dinner tonight. And this thing is gonna be spectacular. I will crisp up the top even more, but look at this thing. This is what you want. Nice crispy edges. You just know that macaroni and cheese is gorgeous, delicious, and cheesy underneath that topping. Okay, I'm gonna let this rest for about an hour and then get started on the rest of dinner.